Inside Michigan Basketball is presented by Meyer. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being with us, everybody. There was only one game on the schedule this week, but considering everything that's been going on, it was a big one. A Tuesday tilt against Maryland, and it was all maize and blue. The Wolverines leading the Terps from start to finish with an inspired effort. A quick start by the Wolverines set the tone for a big night. Early on, Caleb Houston knocks down the triple try, a sign of things to come for the freshman. He can also put it on the deck. Caleb takes his man off the dribble, and good things follow. Houston takes off inside, laid it up, and in, and a foul on a block charge to Fats Russell. Devontae Jones hit double digits for the sixth time in seven games. This floater, two of his 12. The Wolverine defense was dastardly, especially in the first half, holding Maryland to 19 points. Frankie Collins here takes this steal coast to coast, part of a 9-0 run to put him up by 11. And you gotta love this, it's just savvy basketball. Eli Brooks executes the pick and roll with Musa Diabate. Eli so smooth, Moose with 14. Michigan led it 32 to 14. Brooks didn't have to score much, but his defense was downright ornery. Floated up toward Reese, and Brooks picked his pocket, then threw it off the left knee of the freshman Julian Reese. Oh, Eli, the captain, the professor, dominating. The Wolverines led by 20 at the midway point. Early second half, the lead continues to balloon. Houston puts him up by 25 with this long ball. He had 16 points on six of seven shooting. Hunter Dickinson returned from illness, and he was his old self again. Now he'll spin on him left baseline, tiptoes along the basket. He'll fling it up there and score. Hunter into double figures with 11. Hunter made 10 of 14 shots and finished with a team high 21. His presence, a huge difference maker for the Wolverines. You saw that sweet Frankie Collins clip earlier. This one is even better. Throws it up now, Brooks. Alley, you oh. play up for Collins. Somehow he grabbed it and laid it up over the right side of the rim. How about that? Frankie bringing some energy to the floor. And with the game well in hand and seconds to play, here's some more energy. Jace Howard with the cherry on top. He'll shoot a three from the point. Knock it down! Oh, Jace with the stutter step, with the bluff, and then the three. Michigan wins 83 to 64, a much needed victory for the Maize and Blue. All right, nothing like grit and grind. That was a grit and grind game right there, okay, from start to finish. You know, you guys got after it defensively. Set the tone, all right? We knew second half, we should give them credit. Second half, I mean, they are a different ball club. I mean, we're gonna see this team down the road at some point, all right? But nothing like starting a nice little streak. And it starts at home, okay? So we're gonna take one game at a time. One game at a time. Definitely a lighter mood in the locker room when we come back with a victory. Um, the biggest thing, we were having fun out there. You know, it was fun just to have everybody clicking on all cylinders. We got contributions from everybody. Um, the starters, the bench, everybody was giving great contributions offensively and defensively. We were sharing the ball great, playing great defense. Um, it was just a great overall team win for us. Dickinson moved the ball with authority, finishing with a career-high six assists to go along with those 21 points. I trust my guys out there to make shots. And so, you know, guys like C. Hugh, Eli, Devontae, um, even Musa down low, um, I trust those guys uh, with the ball. And so it's easy, you know, to make plays and, you know, they make me look good out there. Houston had struggled from deep in recent games, but connected on three of four from behind the arc. You hit your first shot, and it was the start of a big night for you. When you hit that first shot, what difference does that make, and how does that feel when you kind of get into a rhythm? Um, yeah, I mean, it always helps uh, hitting your first shot, but, I mean, I'm always confident and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, it definitely helps. It doesn't hurt at all. Yeah. Did, you, did you feel a game like this coming? Um, yeah, I mean, I, f I, f I feel like we feel a big game coming every, every game, you know what I mean? So we're a real confident team. Um, I'm confident individual, so, um, yeah, you can say that. And I'll just tell them. Hey, you one of the best freshmen in the country, bro. Um, be be patient. You know, keep shooting the ball. Everything will come together. Um, he always in the gym. He always he hard on himself. You know, whenever he missed you know, a shot or two in a row, I'm like, it's part of the game. You know, you one of the best shooters. You no, know, keep being confident. Keep shooting the ball. We believe in you. It was one win on a random weeknight, but the kind of game the team hopes serves as a springboard moving forward.
I think adversity builds character. Um, and just going through, obviously, we went through a couple of rough stretches. Um, I think that can um, help us a lot and it's um, helped build our team a lot. So definitely go on a little streak here for sure. We've got a lot of motivated people in that locker room. Uh, we know the outside, um, they probably stop believing in us, but as long as we got uh, people in that locker room believing in us you know, we, and we believe in ourselves, you know, anything is uh, possible. So uh, we're going to just keep going from this win, you know, going to Indiana, get, hopefully get another win and just keep building on that. What a difference a winning locker room makes. Coming up next, our conversation with head coach Joan Howard. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. Today's conversation with Joan Howard is brought to you by Meyer. Make grocery shopping a slam dunk with Meyer home delivery and pickup. Juwan, after everything that's gone on, how much joy does it bring you to see the smiles at the end of a game like you did tonight? Oh, man, it's nothing like winning. And, you know, winning is the, the cure of, of everything. Uh, winning cures frustration. Uh, winning helps the food taste better. Uh, winning uh, helps you sleep better. Uh, but it was great to see, like, you know, our guys, you know, going out there and just stand with it, uh, stand positive. Uh, trying to find solutions, but at the same time being able to be rewarded at the end with a victory. Can you talk about the defensive effort because you held them, especially in the first half, 19 points, 30% shooting. That doesn't happen by accident. No, it's, it, it happens with uh, effort and uh, being in tune to attention to detail. And so, you know, we had practice and we had some good practices where we worked on, you know, what it takes to you know, be able to prevent some of those easy drives where Maryland has been able to hurt teams. And then also, you know, keep them off the offensive glass where they've been able to get second shots. And then knowing, you know, like Eric Ayala, he's a tough matchup. You know, Dante Scott, a tough matchup for anyone. Uh, making sure that those guys doesn't get anything easy. And our guys were all locked in from start to finish. You've said repeatedly Caleb has not lost confidence. You've not lost confidence in Caleb. No. How did that factor into the night he had tonight? Well, I'm always going to keep coaching him up, and that's all of his, his teammates, you know, and um, Caleb is a very competitive young man, and he also cares, uh, just like they all do. And, you know, it's nothing like as a basketball player when you see the ball go in the basket, and it's nothing like when you don't see it go in, you get really frustrated because you feel like you let your teammates down, you let yourself down, and that's how he, how he's wired. You know, you think about his team first. And, uh, you know, like, he's always been that kind of guy that comes in consistently, get work in, to figure out ways to improve and ask questions and watch film with coaches. And so I'm not surprised um, that he played well today. And I expect many more games like that, too. Hunter Dickinson did a little bit of everything tonight, played 30 minutes. How do you feel he held up? Well, Big Hunt is, you know, one of our best players, if not the best player on our team, and uh, he relishes and look forward to competition. And it was nice to see him back healthy uh, because, you know, when he's out there, you know, we're a better team. Uh, we are just, you know, much better group. Uh, we, we go through him a lot, and he's been able to deliver night in, night out consistently. Uh, he also is really good at when he gets doubled, making plays for others. That's one of his biggest strengths is his passing ability, his IQ. Uh, but his presence out there on the defensive end was was pretty strong and active uh, too by you know, getting some block shots on some of those drives that Maryland had or some paint touches that they had from dump offs. You know, he was big for us and gave us a big lift and it was great to see the energy coming from uh, you know, the Christ, the home crowd. Career high six assists for him. How much does that tell you he's dialed in? I would not be surprised if he have a triple double one day. You know, that's how good of a passer he is. And I think it's sometimes he's a little bit too unselfish. The team wore a special ML King t-shirt in this one. Can you talk about what Dr. King has meant to you and what his message continues to mean for you? Well, uh, he has meant a lot to me and others. And uh, he's one of my you know, icons, one of my heroes, and you know, a man that has a vision and, 
you know, have a big heart and, and just want to do whatever he can just to impact the world in, in a loving way. And so um, I've always tried to take a page out of his book and, you know, look at the, the glass empty. I mean, I'm sorry, not empty, but uh, full instead of half empty. Juwan, thank you so much. Thank you. It's time for our Elro Steel Man of the Week. Here's Brian Bush. Freshman Caleb Houston had a breakout performance against the Maryland Terrapins. After coming in missing 19 of his previous 21 threes, the five-star freshman was three of four from deep, six of seven overall, en route to a 16-point performance. Plus, he played some great defense as the Wolverines limited Maryland to just 64 points on the night. Well, Brian, maybe the number one trait for a shooter, a scorer, is confidence. And we've heard all along Caleb has never lost that element to his game. No, and, and neither have his teammates lost that confidence in him. I thought they tried to get him involved early. I think his shot attempts have been pretty good in recent games. They just haven't really fallen for him. On Tuesday, he was assertive. He was aggressive. And each of the first two halves, he came up with an early three. Those were so critical. Brian, I don't want to overemphasize this and say there was this huge weight on their shoulders. However, it felt like there was something lifted off of this team with this victory. Yeah, I mean, when they lost on Friday at Illinois, there was a lot of energy, but it did not parlay into a win. They didn't execute as well as they could have. I thought the energy matched the performance against Maryland, and that's a starting point. By no means is this team completely to the form that we thought they could get to, but this is a great starting spot. In some senses, this is a baby step, so to speak. But this game, sports, is about momentum. Can you see this snowballing a little bit in the right direction for the Wolverines? Yeah, I think it can. And I think a lot of what we've seen can be helpful. They were able to force turnovers. They played with high energy. They hit shots. If you can do that, especially on the road in the Big Ten, you give yourself a chance. All right, Brian Bush, thank you so much. You got it. This week's time machine beams us back eight years ago, January 25th, 2014. Number 21 Michigan won at number three MSU, 80 to 75. A pair of three-point plays sealed the game late. First, Nick Stauskis from distance. And Derek Walton Jr. with the bruise and the bucket. It was the Wolverines' ninth consecutive win and its third straight over top 10 teams. Up next, the women had a pair of historic wins this week. We'll catch up with them after the break. Last Sunday, the Michigan women registered an eye-opening win, thrashing conference preseason favorite Maryland 69 to 49. The Wolverines' first ever win in College Park snapped the Terps' nation-leading 31-game home win streak. Maddie Nolan drilled seven three-pointers. That's right, seven, pacing the offense with a game-high 21. We'll have more on her in a moment. Thursday, Nas Hillman posted her seventh double-double of the season with 21 points and 11 boards. The Wolverines blasted Wisconsin 83-44, fueled by a 25-5 second-quarter outburst. Michigan improved to 16-2, the best 18-game start in program history. Wisconsin's a team that scored 81 points on us and out rebounded us the first time we played them. So we really wanted a, our goal to be we were going to lock them up defensively and we were going to out rebound them. And we, we crushed in both those areas, which was awesome. One of the prominent names in those highlights and all season long, quite frankly, has been sharpshooter Maddie Nolan. The junior has more than doubled her points per game from last year, and she ranks among the nation's best in three point percentage. Here's Sarah Van Meter. Another jumper is good. Guess who? Maddie Nolan. Head coach Kim Barnes Rico says Maddie is an exceptional shooter and the junior guard has worked overtime to back up her coach's claim. The work that I've put in over the last three years, um, and even before that in high school, um, whether that be at home, here with our um, people that we work out with, so just trusting that on like my training and my skills that I've done for the past however many years I've been playing basketball and relying on those. Nolan ranks second in the Big Ten in three-point shooting percentage, making 47% of her attempts. 
when I'm shooting it and I'm shooting it well, I think it makes our team so much harder to beat because we do have so many other weapons that people have to guard and when we can add another one to that list, um, it's just gonna be tough. Maddie is from the basketball crazy state of Indiana where she led her Zionsville High School team to the state championship game as a junior. Along the way, she became Zionsville's career leading scorer, breaking a record her mother set. We played two different positions, right? I was more of a back to the basket post player. Couldn't hit a three point shot if I underhand grannied the thing. So our positions are a lot different. Our, our competitiveness is pretty much spot on. A lot of um, get after it, kind of get in your face a little bit. Um, that, that is, we are very much alike in that regard. In high school when I did break a record, she's like, well, you had the three-point line, like that was easier for you, yeah. Um, so just things of that, like jabbing back and forth, because um, obviously she would be able to post me up. She's got a couple inches on me too, but I always joke that I'd cross her up and stuff like that, get her on the perimeter and maybe shoot a three in her face or something like that. Chris went on to set the all-time scoring record at New Mexico State and would become a member of the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. She always tells the story, they made it to the NCAA tournament twice and they sent them to Washington both times and she was, she was angry. They lost both times at Washington, but I know she scored over a thousand points and it's still in the record books for rebounds, I'm sure like field goal percentage and things like that. So I know she had a very successful career. Chris and Maddie's father, Henry, do whatever it takes to attend as many games as possible. Your kids need to know that you're gonna be there for them, win, lose, or draw. It's a big game changer just knowing that you're going to have people after the game um, there for you to give you a hug, whether you had a good game or a bad game, and that they can watch you in person and that they're going to be in the stands. It just it kind of warms my heart to know that they're there. And I wonder, what kind of a parent fan was Mom? I'm a lot more calm um, now than I was as a high school parent. Um, but I still, you know, when she makes a bad pass or, you know, a decision or whatever that she makes that might not be the right one. I'll, you know, give it, oh, Madeline. She's a nervous fan. Um, she wants the team to do well. She also wants me to do well, obviously. But when I'm not doing well, I'm sure as you caught tonight, sometimes I think when I had that turnover, she probably goes, Madeline, and like just says it under her breath. <laughs> and how often does mom call you Madeline? Only when I'm in trouble. <laughs> so like not frequently. <laughs> Michigan's sharpshooter is playing with confidence, and she credits and gives thanks to her coaches, teammates, and parents. When you come to college, you can really appreciate how your parents raised you, and you have time to reflect, and um, just the values that they instilled in me um, as a kid and growing up, whether it's playing basketball or just how to treat people, um, I'm really grateful for, and I couldn't ask for better parents. Thanks, Sarah. Up next, a pair of current Michigan hockey players are headed to the Olympic Games with Team USA. Hear from them after the break. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. Welcome back, everyone. Michigan hockey had a huge weekend series at Big Ten preseason favorite Minnesota. The Wolverines split with the Golden Gophers and look ahead to a second straight road trip this upcoming weekend when they head to Madison to face the Badgers. How's this for an unexpected thrill? On January 13th, Maddie Beneers and Brendan Brisson were selected to the U.S. Olympic hockey team heading to Beijing, China next month. The opportunity created when the NHL decided not to send its players to the games. The duo will miss a few weeks with the maize and blue, but are related for this potential once in a lifetime experience. I'm just excited to play, excited to represent my country and hopefully win a gold medal again. You know, we did that at World Juniors and now we get a chance to do it at a higher stage. I'm really excited. I mean, anytime you get a chance to represent Team USA, it's pretty special, but I feel like it's a little bit more special just because it's the Olympics and uh, I mean, everyone, you know, can't wait to watch. You know, there's a big time difference and I know everyone's going to be staying up or waking up early to watch those games. That's our show for this week. Thank you so much for being with us, everybody. There are two games on the docket for the Wolverines. A hump day battle against Northwestern, a snake-bitten team this season, so look out for the Wildcats. And then Saturday afternoon, on the road at the Breslin Center against Michigan State. We'll talk about it next week right here on Inside Michigan Basketball.